Hi, my name is Krzysiek and I'm here with Dominik, who's the tech lead of our open source. Hello and welcome to our first Shiny Dashboards tutorial. Together we work at Epsilon, where, among other things, we are passionate about creating data science solutions for big and small companies and support them with data visualizations. Over the years, we learned how crucial it is to have an understandable and interactive representation of data. To achieve that, we frequently use dashboards. Dashboards are the perfect tools for creating neat visualizations of data for business and scientific applications. They combine complex layout with simple navigation options to allow you to browse easily through various plots, tables or other widgets. In this tutorial, we are going to teach you how to build and customize your Shiny dashboard. I always believe that the best way to learn is by doing, so let's get to the business of making our first simple Shiny dashboard. We start by importing libraries, Shiny and obviously Shiny dashboard. Then we build a skeleton of our first application by creating a server function that takes input and output variables as the argument. We can also create at the end of the script a call to our server and UI. We type uh, shiny up here. Yep. And then we finally for the first time are taking advantage of Shiny dashboard components. So we create a sh dashboard page and we fill it in with content. There is head header that goes on the top, there is sidebar that will be on the left and finally the body of the application. Let me interrupt you here as some people might ask at this point, how do we know all of that syntax? Well, that's a pretty good question. For those of you familiar with RStudio, I invite you to go into console and put a question mark at the beginning, then type the name of the function you want to learn about. It will show you at the right hand side this help page with a lot of examples on how to get started. Okay, let's run the app now. And as we can see, the dashboard is empty for now. So let's start filling it up with content. First, we're going to add a title to the dashboard header and we can simply make it my dashboard and run the app to see it. Great. Now we can proceed with adding more content to the dashboard body. So first component we want to add is going to be plot. We're going to do a correlation plot on the data from Iris dataset. So what we're going to do is first we have to add a box to the dashboard body, which is going to store our plot output. Let's call the plot output correlation plot. And also we can set the width of the box to 8 to leave some place. Let's now jump to the server function. Here what we want to do is to render plot to our correlation plot output. And the plot function is going to be plotting sepal length from the iris dataset against petal length. Let's run the app and see our plot. Okay, the correlation plot is there. So now we can add some interactivity to it. For that, we're gonna place another box and we're gonna fill it with a select input component. Also, we want to set the width to four. So we have 12 for the full dashboard body width. And we're gonna set ID features on our select input add a label features to it and also we need to provide a vector 
with possible choices for the drop-down of the widget. So let's take three columns from our dataset and fill them in. Okay, that's great. So the last step we have to make is to provide our input into the plot function. So let's type input dollar features inside plot function in server. And also maybe we want to add some labels for the X and Y axis. So on X we have sepal length and we're gonna simply put features for the Y after we type in all the code, we can run our app and check if everything works correctly. Let's see the result. It looks like it does. Now we have interactive plot on our dashboard. But we don't really make any use of shiny features here. Our app looks like a standard one-page shiny app with a menu on the side. Not too much is happening here. That shall change in a second. Let's see how to introduce the dashboard navigation. And again, instead of giving you a quick solution, I invite you to go with me to the documentation of dashboard sidebar. So the dashboard sidebar gives us some clues on how to use the sidebar menu function together with menu items. So let's add sidebar menu to our dashboard sidebar and simply copy one of the menu items from the example twice and we're gonna adjust it to our case. So iris for the first menu item and we're gonna use empty cars data set. So let's call it cars. Let's also set the icons. And the same help page uh, gives us some clues on how to hook up the menu of our dashboard with the content displayed on the dashboard body. So we're gonna copy this fragment with tab items and we will use it in our dashboard body. So we can paste it. Now we have to adjust. We're gonna remove unnecessary line and also this div. Change the names to Irish and Cars. And now we can move our correlation plot to the first tab item and let's create a dummy page for the second tab item. Let's make it simply say cars and wrap it into fluid page. So it has proper width on our dashboard body. We can see that we have two menu items and can switch between them. Now it's time to make a use of empty cars dataset. I could create some simple plot here again, but that's something that you could easily do by yourself now. Actually, as an exercise, you could try to create a third page with a histogram showing the distribution of miles per gallon values of empty cars. Instead here, we will show you how nicely Shiny Dashboard can be integrated with other packages offering interactive tools for data visualization. To mention some of them, there is Plotly for easy interactive plots, there is Leaflet for building maps, and we also have data tables that offer interactive table presentation that is highly extendable and at the same time easy to get started. So in our second page we'll create a table that offers a detailed view into our empty cars dataset. Let's import data table package at the beginning of our script. Now we navigate to the cars tab item and just below the cars header we add data table output with a pointer called cars table. Now we need to render our table, so we move down to the server, we use the same pointer name 
to render our data table and we simply put inside the name of the variable that stores our data. Here we can see like how part of the data looks like in the console and now let's run the application. Let's navigate to the second website and voila, we have pretty nice representation of our data and we can do a lot of interactive stuff with it. Awesome. I just see one problem with this app. Even though we have all the functionalities that we wanted, it doesn't really catch an eye. But there is a way to fix it. If we take a look at Shiny Dashboard website, we'll notice that the standard Shiny Dashboard package offers some color themes that sort of fix it. So let's try to use it. They're called skins. So we have to add a skin parameter to our dashboard page. And let's set it to red and see the result. There's other way to make your Shiny dashboard look awesome. Quite a while ago, we implemented at Epsilon the package called Semantic Dashboard. It takes advantage of semantic UI libraries with CSS and JavaScript code. Our wrapper is quite compatible with Shiny dashboard syntax, so it's pretty easy to get started. Let's see how it works in practice. So the only thing we do is we exchange the import of Shiny dashboard by semantic dashboard. We try to run it, but we are getting some error though. The error message says that skin parameter is not understood. We can easily fix it. And when we run it, we are getting quite neat minimalistic white layout. But does it mean that semantic dashboard doesn't offer any way to customize the look of your app? Once again, let's follow to the documentation website of dashboard page. As you can see, we have two options now, one coming from semantic dashboard, the other one from shine dashboard. Let's pick the top one and we can learn from it that instead of skins parameter, semantic dashboard offers so-called themes. Now the question arises, what are our options here? So for that, you can go to Semantic UI Forest website. We'll put a link to that in the description below. And in the themes section of the website, you can find some different layouts to customize your app. I picked the one that offers a dark mode. And as you can see, with just one line of code, I'm getting this black theme of my app. Remember though that semantic dashboard package is still in a rapid development phase. The stable release is on CRAN, but the most recent version is on our GitHub repository. If you have any problems or questions, we invite you to post it on the issues section there. We have one more tip for you. As your app grows and you want to keep the style of your code in check, we recommend you to use the well-known lintr package that quickly iterates over all lines of your code and gives you suggestions about what to change in order to stick with our programming style standard. Okay, so that's all for today. We really hoped that you liked this short video and we promise to prepare some more tutorials soon that will cover even more details on how to customize your shiny dashboards and make them shine.